on stage with us right now. And the, uh, it's going to be a casual uh, chat. We call it a fire chat session whereby we're going to keep it casual, you know. Uh, a lot of sharing and learning here to be made. And uh, we, we will have some questions from the floor just to set some ground rules or some uh, house rules. Uh, first, of all of, uh, first of all, please ensure that uh, all of your phones are on silent mode or vibrate mode. And uh, yes, we will welcome questions, uh, but preferably after the speakers uh, have shared their session. And uh, when you ask questions, of course, we appreciate it if you can actually, first of all, say your name, where you're from, company or university. And of course, to whom the questions or the question is directed to. But before we proceed, uh, can I see a show of hands? Uh, I know there are companies here, right? How many of you are from the animation companies? Show of hands, please. Thank you. Students? Right, VFX companies, one, all right. Dan Line Line. Okay, there you go, thank you very much. So uh, we are running short, so I'll cut it short. Uh, I wouldn't uh, say so much, which I've already said. So uh, on to uh, our two esteemed speakers. First of all, on my right, we have uh, uh, Dr. Norman, of course. Uh, many of you know him, I'm sure. And uh, a little bit to his left is, uh, of course, None other than, none other than uh, Tuan Haji. So uh, before uh, our esteemed speakers start, actually I just want to ask one uh, very inter uh, interesting question to get the ball rolling here. Um, well, for Tuan Haji, I know you've been in the oil and gas industry uh, for uh, some time, and uh, right now you're actually in the entertainment industry. And for Norman, uh, Dr. Norman, I know you've been, uh, uh, well, I think you've Singer, cut, uh, yeah, and I think you've cut about, what, 10 albums or more? 14. 14 albums, there you go. So I'm sure you guys know that, right? Yeah, they know. Oh, young crowd, is it? <laughs> so my question is this: uh, for Tonaji and uh, even Dr. Norman, I mean, from music to the uh, uh, film industry, maybe you would like to share why, and maybe to, from Tonaji, from the uh, gas industry to the entertainment industry, like why? Maybe you like to share a little bit on that first. That's so, yeah, yeah. Tonaji, please. Okay. okay uh, good. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, everybody wondering. Uh, how come uh, I'm in oil and gas and then suddenly moved to the creative industry? Uh, uh, that's not strange. Uh, Tony Fernandez also uh, from uh, entertainer industri entertainment industry, he set up the airline industry. Uh, but uh, actually, I retired from oil and gas uh, and then got nothing to do. Uh, that's where me and my wife uh, started this uh, animation business. Uh, uh, I don't know how to do animation. Uh, what I'm doing is animation business, uh, totally different from other studios. Uh, other people are doing animation, but what I'm doing is the business in animation. That's why you see Le Copa has so many things, uh, from merchandising, restaurant, uh, so many business around animation. Okay, thank you. Okay, compared to Tuan Haji, I think mine was a bit natural progression. Uh, we, are singers, we were singers songwriter producer started in back 1992, uh, 24 years ago. We were signed to EMI. And uh, we've been very uh, involved in the production of our music videos initially. Then we diversified into producing TV commercials for clients. And there was heavy reliance on using visual effects in our productions. Uh, then we moved on to producing, uh, or we produced our first anim uh, feature film with heavy or extensive use of visual effects back in 2005. To date, we have produced over 20 films. Uh, we have uh, produced uh, one full animation feature film as well. Um, and uh, it was uh, also, coincidentally, you know, actually I met that Tuhaji and I proposed to him about doing this co-production. And ironically, he had planned to do Upin Ipin movie live action in the first place. So it was quite a coincidence that you know when I approached uh, Tuhaji, and uh, it was a uh, great honor and uh, the opportunity given to us to work with with uh, with, with Lako Park, and also uh, working on a huge brand like Upin Ipin. So I think uh, we're here today to talk about this movie. So let's move on to the next subject. Yes. Thank you, Nato. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Tuhaji. Now uh, just a little bit of sharing. Uh, the interesting thing about this upcoming movie, the uh, making of Upin Ipin, uh, Jang Jang Jang. Uh, is that it combines uh, 3D animation and live action. Now, while some of you might think that it's uh, rather new, for, for Malaysia it is, but uh, actually the uh, live action and animation started way back in the 1900s, believe it or not. The very first one was Enchanted Drawing, followed by Gertie the Dinosaur, and we even had a local one sometime back by the title of Mud Glove. I don't know if you've, you've seen it before. 
uh, Imuda was one of the main actors, and uh, of course a combination of live action and uh, animation. But this is unique because this is a combination of 3D animation and live action. So before we move on to the sharing, we would like to play you a teaser. Uh, so uh, the technical team, if you may. It's a snippet from the movie. Yeah. Sorry, it's a snippet. Yeah. Thank Are you. we playing the snippet or playing the teaser? Yeah. Getting right on it, you've already seen the teaser, right, Tonaji? Yeah. Teaser, yes. And uh, maybe we can start with uh, Dato on uh, sharing on your experience on uh, the, the movie itself. So, please, Dato. I think, uh, firstly, Open Epin is a, such a strong brand, there's a lot of expectations. And I think uh, working with Tonaji was a very rewarding experience. Uh, and we're still learning in terms of how he does things, not only on the creative side, but also on the business angle. Um, and um, it was uh, challenging mainly because we had to actually work with uh, a lot of people on a freelance basis who are not familiar with uh, the kids market. So generally, doing movies for, for the children's audience, uh, for, for, for family audience, compared to doing live action for the youth market, two separate things. And that, that is actually a, is, is a big, uh, big uh, learning curve for us, even, because we've been doing a lot of uh, live action movies, mainly catering for the youth market. So, um, that was, that was the challenge, I think, getting people to understand. And uh, to a point, uh, I even discussed with Tohaji and Aja, who's actually a very uh, strong character in terms of, or the, the one driving the creative aspect of the film. Uh, we decided that you know, it's better for, for KRU's team to take a back seat and take the instructions from a uh, from person or a team that actually is familiar, more familiar with the kids' market. So we take care only of the technical aspects. And the thing is, uh, especially during filming, uh, on how to execute, um, uh, especially the director is uh, not familiar with uh, doing filming uh, with, with uh, animated characters and having these actors, most of them have not, not done any film of this nature as well. So we had to actually nurture and guide that. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, you know, we, we allowed, uh, actually we prefer to take a back seat and uh, allow uh, Lako Park to actually give us a direction what needs to be done. Even the simple particle that you see in the, in the, in the teaser, it went through many revisions <laughs> to get Haji to be pleased with it. So I think you know, th those are the, the, the challenges, to understand exactly what uh, the creative angle, that how we want to position this, especially for a brand like Upinipin. And I'm quite happy with the outcome so far. Uh, I just hope that you know, we can continue to improve as we go along. Uh, uh, Dato, you also mentioned that uh, it's a big brand. Now, all of us know Open and Ipin is a huge brand, actually. So when you first actually were involved in, in this uh, production, I'm sure it was like a huge boulder on your shoulder, right? Yes. Because expectations were high. Yes. Would you like to share a little bit on that? I, say, I share the same sentiment with the director and the rest of the team, even the freelancers. You know, I told them basically, look, you may not understand fully what uh, Haja especially has got in, uh, what she's got uh, creatively, what she has in mind. Just make sure they just follow your instructions. You know, there's a script there, and you just follow. And, and we, got the, we got the belief that, that basically that open, uh, last, open Opinion is successful because of Lako Park knowing what needs to be done in the first place. So that's why we've been taking that so-called uh, 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 secondary role in actually uh, going in, based on the directions given by Lako Park. So the same sentiment, I think, with my in-house team, together with the freelancers, same sentiment that we've actually shared with everyone. So, uh, like uh, Tonaji said, uh, he's in the business of animation, right, Tonaji? 
So I, I think uh, uh, that part of it has got, uh, how do you say, uh, he, he knows what he's doing. So of course, so the boulder is big, but at, at the same time, you had some assistance. In this case, it's Tuan Haji. So Tuan Haji, maybe you'd like to also to share, anyway, thank you, Dr. Uh, so Tuan Haji, you'd like to share, uh, for you approaching, this is not your first movie, we know that. And uh, we also know that the brand Upinapin has been uh, on, on uh, TV screens for, for quite a number of years. I think it's, uh, it's hit eight seasons, yeah. right? Ten years? This eight year is ten years. Ten years. Oh, there you go. Ten years uh, anniversary. And eight seasons, right? Uh, ten se uh, eight seasons. Eight seasons. Yeah. And it's also gone international because it's already picked up by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, by uh, Disney. Yeah. Right? So, yes, please uh, share a little bit about the movie. Okay, uh, actually the idea of making this film uh, muted by my wife, uh, Haja, I know, uh, way back into 2013. Uh, at the time, the local film industry was very down. The, there's not uh, many things happening. Uh, the, the audience doesn't go to the movie uh, anymore, to the cinema anymore. So my wife muted that uh, we should do some event filler. So what is the best brand uh, to build this uh, exciting, uh, the industry back is uh, making Upit Ipe movie combined with uh, real action. So we have been looking uh, a few uh, studio to collaborate so that it make it big. Yeah? So in the end, uh, we decided uh, why don't we combine with KRU, uh, which have a big name, combined with Lekopa, it's two giant in Indonesian in the film industry to do it. And KRU is known for the CGI work. Uh, so uh, Lekopa, in terms of light action, is very famous dropping film. Uh, we shot, we don't agree, we drop the film. Uh, 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 this is the second time we've done that. Uh, it's not simple to do this because the live action, we deal with the industry. So some of the industry, uh, they make believe they know everything. So before the shooting, we always say, follow the script strictly because the way we wrote the script, that's where the animation want to come. But during the shooting, because we are not involved with the shooting, uh, the creative industry on the other side feel that they have to put more scenes to make it interesting. But in the end, when we got the rushes back, we can't put in the animation. So that's the challenge. Uh, I think uh, the first shooting was done in 2013. And we dropped it uh, because it's totally cannot be used. A lot of things are uh, very weak, the acting, everything. So we did another shooting at the end of last year. Now we are continuing with it. Even though almost 80% they follow, but there are some changes which is vital in the making of this film that we have to recompose everything. So to save it, there's a lot of animation work that we have done to choreograph of it, uh, what it is to to make all the weakness uh, become very interesting. So if they have followed strictly, we don't have to do a lot of animation to cover it. But because some of the action, some of the acting is very poorly done, so we have to make OPEP the most out of it to cover all this weakness. Uh, that's the challenge. Uh, later, uh, when you see the film toward the end of the year, then we will see, uh, there are something that very interesting is that I don't want to reveal now uh, what this is all about. Uh, but it's a very, very challenging job. Uh, even when we work with KRU, some of the effect, uh, the thought that is good, but on our side, it doesn't meet. So we have to do it until in such uh, time, uh, KRU people have to come to our office, sit down with us. This is what we wanted. So I think now it's getting smoother and hopefully we can finish the film probably by end, end of, of July or August. Yeah. I think the, 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 the biggest problem that we face is that when you deal with live action, uh, we're dependent on freelancers, generally freelancers. So, and they're so used to actually, um, based on the script that's given, they start to ad-lib and they prolong the scene. And the thing is uh, what we actually like to refer to as like jury screen time. So the thing is, they, they try to, to get more screen time. So the thing they want to see, the actors themselves want to volunteer to do more for their characters. So this is the problem. 
So when it comes to continuity in, the, in, the, in post-production, we already knew, okay, what, this is what's going to happen later because the star of the show is still Upin Upin. You know, we, do, we do have the, the, the child actor, Balkish, but the fact remains that when it comes to all the other adult actors, they, they still want to actually be, I mean, to have more screen time. So the movie ended up being like, like what, 120, 130, three, three, min, uh, three, hours. three hours long. So three hours. so three hours long. So the thing is, you know, we had to actually cut down uh, on, on, on that and to, to trim it. And I think whatever has happened, I think is, is uh, again, is a learning curve for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good that, that uh, we went through this process. And uh, I, would, I would say that it's, it comes out better as well. Because the thing is, now we can really see UPNP as a star. On the uh, topic of acting, Dato uh, and uh, Tonaji, now one of the hardest uh, thing to do uh, in live action uh, is when you have a child actor. And we have a child actor in Open Indipin, uh, Jeng Jeng Jeng. Now it's made even harder by the fact that you now act CG, meaning to say the child actor is now acting with something that is not there. So maybe you'd like to share uh, on how you actually address these issues. Uh, I think. The child actor is Putri Balkis. Uh, she's the best uh, actor in Asia. We have no problem with child actor, but the problem is the star actor. Uh, because the star cannot come, uh, wake up in the morning, yeah? so you schedule your shooting 12 o'clock, he will come at 3 o'clock. So the whole production uh, go haywire. Uh, that's the problem. And then all these uh, star actor, uh, beside the main actor, all the other actors, uh, they want to show off uh, by adding more, more dialogue inside it, more action. So, and the other thing is, these freelancers, like Dr. Norman say, uh, they are very experienced people. They, sometimes they don't respect our technical team. Uh, we send our animation director, we have done the storyboard, and our animation director said, the, the camera should be in this way, it should be shot in this way, but when all these people said, uh, oh, it's not very, very nice, uh, the picture, all that, we have to sh sh uh, change the angle, and then the actor want to put more and leave inside. So when the end, in the end, when we got the rushes, we want to bring in OP pain, we cannot come in. So we had to design in different way to do it. We, remember, when you are doing this film, they have to be very strict on following the storyboard. If not, we got problems. So in the end, a lot of choreography, uh, a lot of other things, uh, creative things, uh, you have to think to cover up all these windows and to make it real. Uh, that, uh, on the CG side, I mean, when you have, uh, again, uh, live action and uh, CG, the, the eye line is very important, meaning to say you'll have to put a marker yeah. when that, that, uh, the, ch the person is acting, right? So. Uh, uh, Maybe take us along on how, how you actually uh, resolve that problem to make it Basically, less uh, in the editing room. I mean, the thing is, we've done this before in commercials, music videos, films, uh, uh, even with whatever it is, uh, it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult of a process to actually do the markers. Quite honestly, I think the actors did very well, irrespective of all the issues that we had. Actually, the issues that we had were actually because that they extended the dialogue mainly. And uh, also, uh, we need to get this film to be from the perspective of a child watching the movie. I think that was the main problem because there are some jokes that actually probably is more appealing for adult audience. But I think that those are the issues. But to all this technical stuff, the markers, and then going through the process of rendering all this uh, uh, animated work that's done by Lasco Park, and we do all the rendering, compositing, lighting. I think it was it was quite a smooth process. It's just the, the only thing that was subjective was the, the, the creative parts, between the particles, how it comes in. So that was the, the one that we had our problems with. But generally, everything else was quite smooth. And the other thing that we do is actually the music element. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, uh, the one that you heard just now is a theme song uh, of uh, Opin Ipin, Jeng Jeng Jeng. So I, I think uh, we can uh, show the second reel that... Uh, the second reel. Right? Yeah, sure. The Please. So this is a snippet uh, from the movie. Okay. So it's a sneak preview sort of. Eh?
Actually, there's more to it, but Aji decided to uh, cut it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tea, tea, sugar, sugar. Yeah, sugar, sugar, like uh, Tonaji says. So, uh, so Tonaji, I mean, uh, we have a date for the release of this movie, right? Uh, we we haven't got a date, but we are aiming uh, uh, end of November. So you know, uh, when you want to screen the movie here, uh, first you have to go to LPF. Then you have to go Wajit Tayang to get the date. Uh, so we are trying to sort it out by this month. Uh, the other thing we are planning is for the marketing and also trying to break the Indonesia market. Uh, that's the most challenging uh, to, to show it uh, throughout Indonesia because Indonesia is not easy to enter. Uh, we are working uh, with the government uh, how to bring Upi Ipin. Although Upi Ipin is a very big brand in Indonesia, but over in Indonesia, most of the uh, cinema is controlled by uh, what this, uh, the, the screen owner over there. They are quite reluctant to show uh, this film. So we are working with the Malaysian government and Indonesia government trying to penetrate uh, Indonesia in the cinema. Uh, we just got back from Cannes as well, and uh, we've sold uh, Open Epin, licensed the territory of uh, Middle East, covering 20 over countries. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we need to do an English dub, um, and we have a number of countries who are interested to actually uh, look at the film once we actually complete the English dub as well. So, considering that it's actually got of a lot of local elements, uh, especially this film, it's actually done in such a way that it actually looks very Malaysian. Um, to, to get the opportunity to license across uh, you know, other parts of the world is actually a, a big achievement. Uh, I mean, most of us here know that uh, uh, the first movie, uh, the Gang the Movie, uh, uh, there was one of the, well, locally, box office hit, it's a runaway hit. And uh, I'm sure you have a certain targets for the second movie. Uh, <laughs> so, if you'd like to share with us roughly what you're looking at uh, right at the end. Uh, we have our own target, but I don't want to reveal. Uh, uh, we know how much uh, we can go with this film. But at the same time, uh, Lekopa also is doing uh, the full 3D animated uh, film. Uh, it's called Upi Upin the movie. Uh, and we are planning to finish the film, making the film uh, by the end of the year. Uh, it's going to be a very big film. Uh, hopefully, we can release uh, toward the end of next year because there's a lot of planning to be done. Uh, uh, and we are pushing for international standard. Uh, if, what is this, uh, touch wood, whatever it is, uh, if the court will, we try to release it globally, uh, that film, Upin Ipin. Because now Upin Ipin, uh, uh, if you look at YouTube also, uh, our income from YouTube, uh, America is the third uh, after Malaysia and Indonesia. So it's picking up very, very big in America. And uh, last month, uh, we released uh, Open Pain in Spanish. Uh, and the viewers are going up very high. At the back end, we can see a lot of Latin American uh, uh, followers. Uh, so there's a good chance uh, if we want to go global with Open Pain the movie because it's full animated. Uh, when we do real life, uh, there are some country, there are some resistance from other countries to accept. When it's full animation, you, you, you can you stand better chance in selling or licensing around the world. Uh, when, when, but like as I mentioned, as I mentioned, considering that we have a lot of local elements here, the setting, the way how our actors look, the location, the wardrobe, and everything. Of course, certain markets will react positively, certain markets will not. So I would say that you know all those guys out there actually doing animation keep on coming up with you know great IP. I mean try to emulate what UPDP has achieved. Uh, you stand better chance in exporting your content globally. Uh, just going back on on uh, two very important things of any movie, uh, basically the creative element versus the finances. Now you mentioned uh, Dato that the, the shooting or even uh, Tondaji mentioned that the, the shooting actually was about close to three hours in terms of footages, right? And your final work is going to be what, an hour, a little bit? 100 minutes. So in this case, uh, technically, they actually call it like a two-to-one shooting, or in this case, slightly less two-to-one. Now, s while the finance, the, the producers or people who actually uh, come up with the money are very happy with the fact that you have a very small shooting ratio, 
But in terms of the creative people, sometimes they think it's not enough. Because as you mentioned earlier, there are a lot of iterations when you go through this. So uh, which one or which line do you actually take? Do you go with the creative line or do you go with the financial line? Uh, it depends. Uh, this kind of film, uh, you have to have deep pocket. Uh, but we are very fortunate in Malaysia. I think I'm there or Finas will have a lot of money to give you. <laughs> so try to do it. Uh, for in this case, this film uh, partly financed by Finas through Dana CGI. So we have to give credit to Finas. But on our UP UP in the movie, a full, C, full uh, animation, uh, uh, MDAC is giving us the money. So both sides, uh, we can get the money. <laughs> uh, no uh, last time they used to be rich uh, when I get the money. Now they claim there's no money. But you try. <laughs> uh, hopefully you can get. Uh, but anyway, Finas, uh, there's so many incentives. Uh, but don't abuse it. Please. All the industry people, please don't abuse it. When they give you a trust to do it, do it properly. Deliver it. We don't want to see grant to Brenner chasing all this grant and waste it. And then the government don't believe it. And then you go and scold the government. Uh, so far in the world, Malaysia is the only country that the government is giving free money to the creative industry. Use it properly. Okay. But uh, if I may, uh, that uh, Tonaji is not free. We want something in return. We want global IPs. <laughs> so uh, at this point in time, uh, if uh, there are any questions from the floor, we will uh, be more than happy to actually answer the questions. But again, like I mentioned earlier, introduce yourself, where you're from, or if you're with a company or student, and. Uh, uh, to which uh, speaker the question is targeted at. Any questions? Don't be shy. Any question yes, from the don't floor? don't be shy. Students? Your best chance. Uh, Malaysia ni ni malu sikit. Uh. Bila keluar minum kopi, ah, dia. So yes, keluar. yes. I'm going to run there, just walk to him. It's one person to start yeah, first. Yeah. Then yeah. Everyone will Icebreaker. Yeah, exactly. Later we won't stop. I'll stop, I promise you. Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Hilmi. I'm from a uh, digital marketing agency called Sashimi. Um, I'm just interested to know, right? So this is the first time we're doing something that is real life and also animation, kan, Tuaji? So how do you expect the rural and suburban market to actually react to this? You know, I mean, because there's an element of, I mean, we're just talking just now with my colleague, macam toyol keluar je, you know, that sort of concept. How would they react to this sort of concept? Because Upinipin has always been cartoon animation, right? Full on. But how do they react to this? So far, I think the reaction has been very positive. I mean, what we see on the a trailer on YouTube, I think over 2 million views already. And we have uh, the... Uh, Tuanaji actually presented this in the Upinipin Carnival last year. I think there was a lot of excitement. I think there was about how many? 100,000 people that came? 300,000 people that actually watched the, um, the, the teaser. Uh, judging from uh, the international reaction is also very very positive. I think uh, they see these characters to be to be the way it's being lighted and calm is a little bit different than what you see in a, in an animation animation version. So I would say that naturally, of course, it will take some time for adjusting. Uh, but I think the kids will have no problem with it at all. I think the star of the show is Peter Pan, and I think whatever Tuan Haji and Haja has done to actually trim the movie makes it even more impactful. Um, the parents, I think, will be very ha happy to bring their kids because this is the kind of movie that I don't think the parents will be turned off to watch. That's one. I don't think this movie will have problems with even youth audience because I think we cover that. So it's actually a movie for everybody, actually. So uh, I would say that, that it's just a matter of getting used to watching the trailer. We, after this, we're going to launch an official trailer. There will be a lot of marketing uh, activities to, to promote the Philippine Jeng 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 after Raya. So I think uh, I think this is going to be one of the highly anticipated movies this year. Uh, when we work with uh, Kario, uh, there's a lot of new things that we doing uh, on our part also. Uh, there's a lot of promotion going to be done, uh, and we are fortunate also uh, because Prime Works uh, is our distributor. Uh, so thank you, Izam. 
so, uh, Open Open is always on TV9. So, it's quite easy for us uh, to create uh, all the new ways of marketing film. Uh, uh, there's so many ways we are doing it. Uh, I think the first one, the first salvo we are going is uh, uh, in the football match uh, between Malaysia and Timor Leste uh, on the 6th of June. You watch, uh, there's a billboard about this. Uh, nobody have done a promotion on the football, football matches. Uh, that's AFC football. Uh, so this morning I sign up, you go and advertise. Uh, this is open to all the Asian market. So uh, uh, apart from that, uh, from after Hari Raya, we are going to start all the promotion. And at the same time, uh, we are hoping that this film will be launched with Maha, where Upin Ipin will have uh, sold their own exhibition in Maha. Uh, normally, uh, when we do our carnival or exhibition like that, it will attract a lot of people, a lot of children. That's where we sell this film. So a lot of promotion will be tied up with uh, this film. Okay. Uh, personally, uh, I feel that, uh, you know, the first time I saw the teaser online, uh, the first words that I uttered was, it's going to be big. Seriously. Simply because, I mean, many of us are exposed to a lot of live action and uh, uh, animated movies. Example, the most recent was Alvin and the Chipmunks. Now, big in the sense that when you forget those characters are animated, then the movie is really going to be big. And when you look at the teaser, personally, I felt that technically it was done really, really well. It blended well with live action. Uh, acting was good, seriously. Like I was mentioning about the eye line and all that. It was there. It was good. And it will definitely be believable. So that's what I mean by big. So frankly, I'm very excited actually and uh, waiting for the movie to be out in the screens. Yeah. That's what I'm worried uh, because later on the children believe that OPP is the life. <laughs> Uh, any more questions from the floor, please? Any more questions from the floor? Anyone would ask uh, any question? Yes? No? No? So if... Uh, if no, then we are going to have uh, yeah. the first premiere, so you're going to watch the movie yeah, right. uh, for the first time here in uh, Creative. Ladies and gentlemen, Upin Upin Cheng Cheng Cheng. No la. <laughs> no, he's just pulling your leg. So okay, I mean, just kidding. Thank, you, thank you. He's just pulling your leg. Uh, before we end, because uh, there's also a press conference that's going to be happening at one o'clock, right? So we are trying to keep time. Uh, before we end, I mean, uh, any parting words uh, uh, for our young uh, budding filmmakers and animators there? Uh, maybe starting with uh, Dato. I think uh, if anything that can we can learn from this process, I think planning is very important. Uh, and I think when you do visual effects or animation. Everything is all storyboarded. Uh, it's a bit more structured. You really time it in such a way that you see your animatics, you know what to take out and what to actually continue with the production. It's different when doing live action. Especially uh, you're actually working with uh, freelancers that you're not, you cannot control what happens on set. Sometimes it rains, actors don't turn out on time, you know, things like that, you know. So the thing is, uh, the, uh, the, the most important thing is actually uh, if you guys want to specialize on animation, even for KRE, we are moving away from live action. We are doing more animation now, and we hope that we will, we will emulate uh, the success of Lasco Park as well. Um, and of course, we do a different kind of uh, content. Uh, Lasco Park has got their own direction. But generally, you know, I think that for, for Malaysian companies to grow, um, I think if you, can, you guys can focus more on, on animation and whatever that surrounds it, for example, games, uh, apps and all the other licensing opportunities. There's a lot more that can, you can achieve through animation than live action. Uh, just before uh, Tonaji takes the mic, I just like to add also that uh, uh, for MDEC also, this is actually my TVC lah, TV commercial MDEC. <laughs> we actually uh, advocate the fact this uh, 360 uh, marketing whereby, like you know, uh, in the early years when animation was really young in Malaysia, if you are doing a production for television. Uh, that's the only business that the company would think of. So now what we are saying is like what Dr. Norman just uh, mentioned that we are telling the companies actually to actually be uh, more creative in actually marketing your IPs. Games, comics, small screen, big screen, uh, uh, you know, YouTube, doesn't matter. So there are a lot of opportunities for you to actually monetize from your IP rather than just uh, go to the TV stations. I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I'm saying that there are a lot of channels nowadays. 
So with that, uh, maybe uh, Tonaji uh, on the business of animation, some sharing, please. Yeah. Uh, this animation business actually is a crazy business. Uh, you have to invest a lot of money. You don't know whether you have returns. Uh, and this is being driven by all these young people who think they know the world. So you have to be very careful. Uh, uh, to me, if you want to do a serious business in animation, you want to produce production for commercial, your studio must be built in a factory environment. That means uh, you must have skilled workers, you must have your process, you must have your money to run it. So two, three people cannot produce a commercial production. Uh, and then those who drive it must know your market. You want to produce content for teenagers. You bring your product to the TV station. They say there's no window for teenagers for animation, only for children. So you have to wait it. Uh, you have to tackle them. How to convince your product can be a hit. But now you are fortunate enough. YouTube is a very big base for you to try your product, to make it happening, then the TV station will pick you up. So there are two things only if you want to be a hit on YouTube. One, you, build, you produce a very, very good product. The other one is a very stupid product that people will love to watch. But some people say this animation is so stupid, but nobody follows. But actually, that animation is not a stupid product is a failed product because they want to be the best product but fail. So it's not a fail, uh, it's not a stupid product. What I mean a stupid product is like Mr. Bean. So you have produced something very, really stupid, you design it to be stupid. Uh, once you get the hit, it's not a problem to convince the TV station to take up your product. But I come from a different way, so you can't follow me. Thank you. All right, so uh, with that, uh, we'll uh, uh, conclude this uh, fireside uh, uh, chat. And we uh, thank uh, Dr. Norman uh, for sharing, and of course, uh, Tuan Haji. So thank you very much. Uh, round of applause, please, for our speakers. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for our speakers. And also, thank you, Mr. Vernon, who moderates this. Uh